There we go. Okay, so we know this. Today's notes. We're going to be graphing parabolas. Parabolas. So a parabola is any x squared equation. So if you have an x squared, it's a parabola, okay? And we hopefully know the shape of a parabola. Looks like this. The parabola's got some really nice features in it that we want to talk about. I think the best feature is the fact that it is symmetrical, right? So when you watched Eddie graph it in the warm-up, Eddie, what you graphed was only half these points because you folded them over, right? So we know there's a line of symmetry, and a line of symmetry is x equals some value, okay? If it's in vertex form, it's just x equals h, okay? If it's in vertex form, it's just x equals h. That's the line of symmetry. It's also the coordinate of my vertex, right? So it's also my vertex is some value here, h comma k. Now we've done this, which helps, okay? We know it's the opposite, remember the silly little dance, right? And the reason it has to be, it has to be the opposite, is whatever this value is, it zeroes it out. It has to be the opposite because it zeroes out and brings this to its lowest point. That's why it's got to be the opposite, right? Yep. What value here would make this zero? h. Boom, all the way down the bottom, right? Okay? It has a line of symmetry which goes through it, and whatever the x value of the vertex is, whatever the x value of the vertex is, that you're around the symmetry, okay? It's an x equal equation because it's an up and down line. Now, it's invisible. It's invisible, but it's still a line of symmetry, okay? Um, we know that wherever it crosses the x-axis, those are called x-intercepts or zeros, right? Those are called two things. We call them x-intercepts. So these values um, let me get a different color. These are x-intercepts, but they're also called zeros. They're called zeros because whatever the value is, if you plug them in, it makes a zero, okay? All right, so let's take a look at example one. So this should be super easy. Example two on the back is going to be a little bit more challenging. But let's do example one. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to graph this. All right, I already know what the vertex is, don't you guys? The vertex. What's the vertex of this parabola? Positive two, negative four. I agree. So we can just put that on a graph. Two, negative four. We'll put it right there, okay? It has a y-intercept, and the y-intercept So I want to give you the formulas, because this one's actually really easy, but they're not always going to be easy. So think about it. If I drew a y-intercept, what's the x value on a y-intercept? What's the x value? Zero. So if I plug in zero, I will always get the y-intercept, okay? So what we're going to do is this. If, so if we let x equals 0, we'll get the y-intercept, right? So I'm going to do that. I'm going to try and take and go y equals 0 minus 2 squared minus 4, which is negative 2 squared is Four and four minus four is zero. Okay, I don't want to confuse you. Oh, yeah, I 
Yeah. Is this uh, we did the same thing in geometry, but mm -hmm. like you did. Is this one. is this harder? Or no, basically the same thing. Basically the same thing. All right. So that's where we're not going to do a whole lot on this because it should be a review jump. Next two days should be a review jump. Okay. Then since we're now to two, we'll start talking about x cubes, x to the fourth. We're going to start doing polynomial. Show you. It's okay. It's going to be good. Okay. Now, so this is a point. You guys agree? The y-intercept is a point. And it's a point at 0, comma, 0. Okay? In this case, it just happens to be right here. Not always there, but in this case, in this example, it's got to be right there. Now, I know there's a line of symmetry. And the line of symmetry absolutely has to go through the vertex. Everybody agree? Thumbs up. Has to go through the vertex, right? So this line of symmetry is x equals 2. There's my line of symmetry, which gives me another point. I have a third point, and I don't have to do any math. Boom. I have a third point right there. Um, Why? Mirror, the mirror. Yeah, yeah, wasn't that easy? That I didn't have to do any math at all. That point's right there. You guys agree? Yeah, boom. Do we have three points? We can graph our parabola. Now, if we want to do it really carefully, we can. I can go my 1, 1, 2, 4, but I can just go ahead and draw in my parabola. Oh, I missed it. There it is. Yeah, there it is. What do you think? Right? Looks great. Looks great. Thumbs up. Okay, now turn the page. Now sometimes they're not. They're not in vertex form. Here, I'm going to use this one. Okay, sometimes they're not in vertex form. Okay, if they're not, then we're going to use this formula here. So this is in what we call standard form. There's a 1 here. It's an invisible 1. But we, in standard form, you have ax, so number, some number in front of x squared, some number in front of x plus c. Okay, so for us, in my example, we know that a is 1, b is 2, and c is negative 8, right? And again, you're right, Ariel. We did this last year, last semester, in geometry, right? If you just had geometry, that's really going to help quite a bit. If it's been a year, we'll remember it. Okay, now, I still want to find the vertex, so I've got a little formula. So first of all, line of symmetry. Let's do that first. Line of symmetry. I want to use this formula. I'm going to say x equals negative b over 2a. Well, that's a pretty easy little formula, right? A is 1, B is 2, and C is negative 8. So I'm just going to go, okay, X is equal to negative 2 over 2 times 1. Negative 2 over negative 2, I get X equals negative 1. So what I'm going to do then is put my line of symmetry on my graph. So here's my X-axis, right? There's my X-axis. I'm going to find negative 1 on my x-axis, which is right there. And it's invisible, but I like to draw it in. Okay, It's invisible, but I still like to draw it in. Okay, There it is. There's my line of symmetry at x equals negative 1. How am I doing? Am I going too fast? Okay. Pace is all right? Okay. Now, the vertex has to be on that line, doesn't it? Yeah. Vertex, I mean, the vertex is somewhere on this line. It's a point somewhere here. So we're going to plug this into our equation. We'll get y because it says y, right? So I know my vertex is negative 1 something. So my vertex is negative 1 something. So I'll take my negative 1. I'm going to plug it in. 
So I'm going to go, okay, y equals negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 8, right? Negative 1 squared is a positive 1. 2 times negative 1 is a negative 2 minus 8, which gives me a negative 9, okay? So I've got a vertex. So I'm going to put a point here at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There we go. Now the y-intercept. Let x equal 0. That's what I said before, right? I said let x equal 0. Now we can do this in our head. What is it? Take a look. What's the y-intercept? x is 0, x is 0, what's the y answer going to be? 0, 0, right? And I'll show it, but you guys agree? It's got to be negative 8, right? So I'm going to go, if I did it, I'd go, okay. y is equal to 0 squared plus 2 times 0 minus 8. y equals negative 8. So it's a point, it is a point at 0, negative 8. Okay, so that would be right there. What's that fancy L? Well, I mean, is that, is that say lead? Yeah, that's an L. Hey, okay. I am so old that I know cursive. <laughs> How does that make it old? So do I. Some of you, some of you. We have to. Oh, yeah. so you we learned, learned cursive, but I don't know how long it's actually running. The only thing I remember is the writing my name. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, third, third, fourth. When I was in college, it's all we did was cursive. Oh, that's not cursive. So almost, I want to find one more thing. I want to find my zeros, okay? So I'm going to find my zeros. I'm going to come on up here and talk about my zeros. So let, let y equal 0, okay? To find the zeros, let y equal 0. So we're going to go 0 equals x squared plus 2x minus 8. All right, now we're going to see if you learned anything. I'm sure you were. <laughs> factor. Do you remember factoring at all? Anybody remember factoring? No, nobody remembers factoring. Okay. So, x times x makes x squared, correct? What times what makes negative 8? What times what four makes negative 8? times 2. Good. How about if we go a positive 4 and a negative 2? Why do I want to do it that way? Well, you get rid of the... Right, and not only that, but if you were to add these two, what do these two add up to? Positive two, don't they? 
So we got an x squared, negative 2x plus 4x makes that, and then a negative 8, right? Yep. Now, oh, can you explain that one more time? Yep, I will. Keep gonna do, we are going to do this. Okay, ready? Point at x times x, x squared. You need multiples of negative 8 that will also make a 2. Oh, this. Yeah. This is like bringing beautiful things together, though. Yeah, it is. Isn't it cool? So then we know that the positive 4 and negative 2 will multiply to make negative 8. And positive 4 plus negative 2 would make a positive 2, right? Oh, yeah. I remember doing this. I, I don't remember what it was. I did this in yeah, job. I, I remember doing some work. Yeah. We're more still more. solving for x, aren't we? Yeah. By the way, there's going to be two answers. Can you see two answers? We're going to have a 0 equals x plus 4 and a 0 equals x minus 2. And this solving is easy, right? So we're going to solve both. We should have two answers because it's going to cross twice, right? You agree with that? We should have two answers. It's going to cross twice. Minus 4, minus 4, plus 2, plus 2. So there's my zeros at negative 4, 0, and at 2, 0. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2. And now I can draw my parabola in. It's been a while, right? But you did this in geometry, right? It's OK. All right, last problem, as soon as you're ready. Last problem, slide it up. Okay, tell me when you're ready. I want to slide it until you're ready. Who's still working on this? I don't mind waiting. All right. Actually, do you mind if I can make a quick call? Sure, go do it outside, yeah. Okay. All right, we're going to slide this up. Caden, you are amazing. Thank you. So, now, example three it looks like it's already been factored, doesn't it? Yes. So, we can get its zeros by setting up the mini equations. Like we just did, okay? And we have to unfactor it? No, no, let's not do that. That'd be too much work. We could, but let's not do that, okay? Instead, let's just do what we did here. So up here, it was factored. What did we do? We found our mini equations, and we solved, right? So let's do the same thing. I'm going to say, okay, 0 equals x minus 4, and 0 equals x plus 2, because it's already factored. It's already factored. Don't worry about the 2, okay? Don't worry about the 2. Don't worry about the 2 at all. The 2 is just going to make it steeper. Does that make sense? It won't change the zeros. So one of the zeros is 4 and the other zero is negative two. Okay, so let's put that on my graph. Four, one, two, three, four, and negative two, okay? Okay, you with me? It was already factored. I found the zeros by making my mini, I call them mini equations, okay? And I solved, okay? So I had, it was already factored, I got my mini equation, the solve plus four plus four, Minus two, minus two, so I got a point at negative two, that's one of my zeros, and a point at four, that's one of those zeros. Now, where is the line of symmetry? You can see it. It's invisible, but you can see it. Where's the line of symmetry? One. 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 How do you know that? You're correct. How do you know that? They were one. The point's going to be in the middle. It's got to be right in the middle. You guys agree? So it has to be here, right? So line of symmetry's got to be there. It's right in the middle. Totally agree. So I'm just going to put that in. It's invisible, but that's okay. Boom, 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 boom. So x equals 1. Okay. Now, where's the vertex? Well, it's on this line somewhere, isn't it? Where's the vertex? Right? Somewhere. How do I find out where it's going to be? Where's the y? How do I find it? Hayden. Um, you can find it by dividing Okay. So you can divide 4 by, uh, oh wait, no, it's because like 4 squared is 12, so then you, wouldn't you go down 12? Or is that not right? It's close. Let's not, you know what, let's, you are correct what you're thinking, but let's not do it that way. You're doing it really a hard way, which is okay. Um, you have a really good idea, Peyton. Can I just plug it in? How about if we just plug it in? How about we just plug it in? So let's plug in, 
plug in x equals 1. Let's see what we have. We have y equals 2 times 1 minus 4 times a 1 plus 2. Okay, so I'm just taking my 1. So I know that the x value is 1, right? I just need the y value. So it's somewhere along here. So if I plug this in, I will get the y value. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's just simplify this. Is your head hurting, Paige? It's all good. Y equals 2 times negative 3 times 3, right? Which means the Y is negative 18. Okay, I'm going to have to go by 2's then, right? I'm going to change my scales. Negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, negative 10, 12, 14, 16, negative 18. I had to change my scales. So my vertex is right there. Now we have enough to graph my points. There you go. So today, for homework, okay, I want you to do page 53. We're going to do 1 to 6 all. You probably want a mask break first, right? And then um, we can work.